time to draft everybody. I'm going to send it on over to Marshall and Paul with the call. Thank you, Maria. Welcome back to the booth here at PT Marshall Secliff with Paul Chian. And as they deftly outlined for us there, we've got uh, a draft to show you here. And of course, this is the part that, well, at least Paul and I look forward to a lot before we come in. And we're going to be watching Nathan Stoyer draft again. He's kind of going for history. I mean, you know, this type of run doesn't come together very often where people can string together the highest level events, potentially three in a row here for, for Nathan. Yeah, so I mean this draft has a lot. This is Interestingly, one of the highest stakes drafts we've ever covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and we saw the pot too. It just to absolutely stacked. But just the run that Nathan is on right now, it is incredible. Only a handful of players have been kind of on a heater like this in the history of Magic. I mean, we're talking That's about true. players like Kai, LSV, Finkel, and Nathan. C continuously just putting himself in position to top eight every single event. Yeah, we wanted to cover this draft this morning because yesterday Nathan had a loss relatively early in the day, which often kind of takes you out of the feature table rotation a little bit. You know, you're not as high in the standings for a while until you kind of catch up. But don't forget about our, our champ here. Nathan Stoyer is very much in the mix here with an amazing day two performance. Again, I, those are the types of performances where you only get one loss. You don't get that many in your whole career, you know. You go, go talk to the Hall of Famers out here and ask how many times you've gone undefeated or won As loss on day one, and it's very few. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the draft here, though. As you can see, the players are now preparing, and there's a little bit of a wrinkle because of the double face cards in this set, Paul. Two things are going to happen right now. First one, well, the, the, I guess the technically the first one is they're going to count 15 cards, but the first one is they're going to show what double face cards they got to the table. Exactly. So the way that this is going to work is you count out your 15 cards, every pack will have a couple of double face cards. You're going to get those double face cards and then show that to the rest of the table. Once the rest of the table has enough time to process what those cards were, then we're going to go ahead Ooh. and sleeve those cards. How about one of those? There's an Elish Norn <laughs> for, <laughs> for Nathan Stoyer. And by the way, there are two different Elish Norns in this set. This is Elish Norn No Comma. Yep. Which, interestingly, is actually the worst of the two, but still a very good it's card to open up. Still an absolutely solid card. Yeah. And, um, it, and, and Showcasing these cards does add kind of uh, a new way to kind of strategize when you're actually drafting. Because if you see somebody open something like an Elish Norn, you know that, look, I probably don't want to be a white drafter with him passing to me. That's right. right. The people who are going to take the most note are the people to Nathan's left. They, that is who he's going to be passing to for all of pack one and all of pack three. And generally speaking, it's highly disadvantageous to try to be in a color that a okay, person to your right is in. Yeah, absolutely. And As a reminder, also one of those things, too, where white is generally one of the colors that's not considered the among the strongest colors. Oftentimes when, people, when you ask people, what are the two worst colors in the format, usually it's white and red. So if you already see somebody open a very good white rare, you're like, okay, you know what? That's fine. I'm just going to avoid white and try to just try to draft the other four colors. That's right. Uh, interestingly, the people that Nathan passes to also will have a bit of extra information, right? Like, hey, I noticed that Elish Norn over there. Hey, it's not in the pack anymore, right? Right. It's not often that you get to actually know what your uh, neighbors first picked. But in a double face card format, in the interest of fairness, this is how it has to be done. Now, the other thing that's happening here is that the players, as you see, are gonna be sleeving up the entire pack, so that information is, uh, is now hidden going forward. But the neighbors get to know. Right, absolutely. I mean, we saw something similar in yesterday's draft, where Reed Duke opened Invasion of Fiora, and well, that's one of the best rares in the set, right? Yep. And you, you, you know he's gonna take it, so if your two reads left, you absolutely are going to avoid black as much as you can. The only reason I can see is if you open something on a similar power level that's also in black. That's right. Please so double check you still have 15 card sleeve now. You just can see case, our never know. Judge Kevin is just double checking. Tournament integrity, of course, takes the absolute priority at all times. Hence revealing all double good? face cards, hence sleeving, and hence Kevin Pick double checking with everybody. Seconds. And off we go. This is a timed draft for our players here, so they're going to have a specific interval of time that they get to choose. Couple okay, he did find an artistic refusal, which is a powerful option, but it's going to be really difficult to yeah. pass an Elish Norn here. Yeah, and he immediately does put the three most powerful cards up in the front there. You see the Elish Norn there. You see the um, artistic refusal and the streetwise brawler. All You know, the brawler is... Just a two mana three three, very very solid offensive creature. But I mean, Elish Norn, ten seconds. Really hard to just 
not go ahead and just take that Mythic Rare, and then also just kind of plant your feet. You go, hey, this is a card that I'm going to first pick. Most people think I'm going to take this, and that just means, Draft. look, if we play kind of friendly, so pack, we'll, pack, we can both kind of... Cards, where you want to be is a position where you are drafting not the same colors as the people around That's you, right? right? And that just gives both of you the best chances to succeed in a pod. Yeah, it's sort of a prisoner's dilemma type scenario where it's beneficial to both of you to stay out of each other's way. Right. Let's see what he's going to pick up here. I see a Wraith. Wow, there's a lot of no, that's blue not a wrath. and white cards here. Knight Errant of Eos is a rare that he's had passed to him. That looks good. for Phyrexian Awakening, solid. And a Sculpted Perfection. Now, right. Sculpt Less desirable right. color pair. Now, a Sculpted Perfection is Thanks, one I of guess. the reasons to go kind of into the white-black Phyrexian deck. It's an excellent card. However, you probably just... It's a little bit safer to just take one of the white cards here, given you're first picking Elish Norn. Wow. But wow. Draft. Okay, no safety Except needed here. No safety. Hey, Elish Norn is a Phyrexian. There <laughs> We're you go. We're already working on the, uh, on the synergies here. One thing to note, Correct. by the way, is yesterday, White Black... Was, had the second most trophies, second most three O's of all the different archetypes yesterday. I was right surprised to see that, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Enduring Bond Warden is pulled to the front right now, but already this pack uh, looks kind of medium compared this, to what he's seen. This is a, a very, very weak pack. There's really nothing in here right. that you're too happy taking. The Rampaging Geoderm is the most powerful Ten card seconds? in the pack, but it just... It's so not something worth abandoning your first two picks over. Right. So. He keeps throwing it to the front. I guess Whoa! he's just, all right. He's just, he's just taking power right now and just seeing how things shake up. If he does end up getting kind of the the red green battles deck, this is you know Quite one it. of the cards that you want in your deck. It's kind of the signpost on top. Yeah, it. he just took a double white into a white black card. I. Doesn't leave him a lot of wiggle room there. I, I think it was one of those packs where you look at the white and black cards, you go, well, I would never really be happy playing any of these cards. So, so I'm well just going to take, take the most powerful thing. Okay, that's fair. Sunder to the gateway. There's a Jeru and Hazaret there as well. Then seconds. Yeah, I would not be oh. happy. Sec third. Wow. These are some fairly weak picks. Is he just going to go for power here yeah, again? Yeah, he should now, right? I, he's just gonna, uh, now he's going to go draft. for Sunder to the gateway, fourth pick. Second and pass. Yeah. And now, the Jiro is not the tough. most impressive of kind no. of the uh, legendary tandems, but it's still a 5-mana, 5-4 five, five, haste. Uh, if you are kind of the red-white aggro deck, it can be okay to just kind of put into your deck. Right, and Sunder does go into the black-white deck just fine. There's a Traumatic Revelation, which does the same, but power level-wise, these aren't the highest. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, <laughs> it fell off a bit after Ten that first seconds. pick, of course. Boy, it's kind of falling off a cliff. I, yeah. yeah, but... The nice thing about the black-white strategy deck, though, um, the, is that Draft. it's just highly synergistic, yes. and th and that's what you see calls? Nathan doing here, right? He's like, I know these cards are not cards you genu generally take very high, but if I'm moving Correct. into black-white, if I just take anything that says incubate on it, along with the scriptures that I have, maybe all those cards can work together to just make a nice deck. Yeah, and I like that. Etched Familiar would be a nice addition here as well. Yeah, it's a Phyrexian creature, I believe. Ten seconds. It is. It's a Phyrexian Fox. Oh, right. Yeah. Draft. Poor Fox. Yeah. Shuffle and pass nine cards. Used to be cute. <laughs> Collect. Another Sunder? Another is that where we are? For goodness sakes. Um, Boy, these packs have been all over the place for him, yeah. too. Just no clear direction to go. Right. I think maybe one of the better cards in the Five pack seconds. is just Assimilate Essence, but it, just, it doesn't look like he's interested in being blue. Uh, blue is a heavily contested color. Draft. Mm -hmm. And I can totally see going into Draft this draft, eight cards. even considering not drafting blue, Got just it. knowing that there's going to be three people, maybe even four, trying to force blue because it's the deepest color. Yeah, people really are high on blue. Rao's Reinforcements is going to be the pick now for Nathan. Okay. Five Perhaps um, it's only a slight uh, dip seconds, into sorry. red here right. for him, but... Draft? Not seeing a ton of black cards, no, right? No, it's easy. You just saw the watchers. Yeah. And, and, and that, that was the only Quite thing it. where when, when I saw that pick, I go, well, there were two perfectly good white cards that you want to take out of that pack. When you take the, the Sculpted Perfection that early, that, there is a decent chance that that Five card seconds. just does not make your deck, right? right? Taking that second doesn't mean 
black's going to be open necessarily. Somebody could have Draft. just taken a removal spell. He's going to take Seven invasion of new Capenna guys. here, which if you haven't drafted the format much, you might think, oh, got sweet. It. You know, he's got this uncommon battle and it's in his colors. It's a gold card, but that card's actually not great. Right, because oftentimes when you have a battle and you flip it, you get a creature, mm -hmm. right? Draft. So it's almost always worth it. You, you often get a lot of value. But in this instance, you get an equipment. So it's cards. not quite as strong. I will say if you do draft a very synergistic deck and basically every creature in your deck is a Phyrexian, it can give you some uh, some advantages there, right? Because and all of a sudden, that you, direction. right? If every single card is a Phyrexian, boom, you get to plump Draft. your whole team. Yikes! Urn of Godfire Best here for Nathan. Though we are well and truly down the Got back. It. Taking a look on the left side, you see he is in black white, pretty solidly right now. Draft. He took the rampaging Geoderm on a flyer, Best but doesn't look like counts. that's going to fit into the plan. And then he has a r random rouse reinforcements. So everything else is either black white or black and white. That is a late Cryptomancer. Draft. Wow, that is Cyber surprising to me. Still in the pack? I've been so, you know, in Go the ahead. beginning of the set, I thought, okay, well, maybe this is a decent trick. And then every time I just play, I just get more and more impressed with that card. Card's Draft really good. The removal is excellent. Spell. Everybody's going to have four or five premium removal spells. This counters it. And then just you having that extra body in play, too, for Convoke, to for various sacrifice themes, really just added a lot of value to me over, over time as I've been drafting the card. Somebody's going to be happy to have picked that up, no doubt about it, especially that late. Yeah, I, I mean, outside of that first pick, perhaps the second pick doesn't look all that exciting right now. But, you know, hopefully the signals that Nathan sent by trying to cut off all the Phyrexians in pack one will reward him in pack two. You can see some direction forming for his deck here, but he's going to need a lot of help. The, all of the middle ground picks that he, he got were very middling stuff. No, none of those were the premium cards that you really want for the, for the deck. The good news is, is this format is very deep. And usually making playables isn't an issue at all. It's just more about, you know, how quality are we talking about here? But it's not like you get to the end and you're just looking at a pile going, I, I, don't even, I have to play extra lands because I don't have enough stuff. That doesn't really happen in this format, but, you know, quality yeah. matters. It, it absolutely does. Now, Nathan's deck is also a little bit light on interaction. Um, please you, you just have the one card. And, and please place your also just the power level of the creatures in his deck is also sure kind of low, nothing gets right? Mixed up, We're looking at just some two mana two twos, three mana three twos. Please make sure uh, you have 15 you need that. You need to basically draw that scriptures. The scriptures is definitely the focal point. Of course, Elish Norn does good work, but that scriptures is definitely what he's building around right now. All good, 15 cards for everybody. You may reveal double face cards. You have 45 seconds to look at them. OK, so everybody once again is going to be looking around and seeing what kind of good stuff was opened. Looks like Javier doesn't have a whole lot going on there. Maybe Invasion of Ikoria. Kenra Spellspear here. That's a good card for whoever ends up with it. Ooh. Invasion. Oh, that's much better, though. That's a lot better. If, if you're drafting the blue-white deck, which is one of the stronger aggressive archetypes. Are you going to look okay. it up for me, Paul? You may I can't now remember what's... Sleeve New... your cards. Please sleeve them face down. Which plane is it? Which plane would have a bunch of 2-2 two, two New Phyrexia. New Phyrexia. I even said new. I'm so... <laughs> Where's my Old confidence? Where's yeah. my confidence, right. you know? Yeah. Okay, and once again, the players are going to be sleeving up. So we get just a little minute here. Um, and I, I got to say, yeah. you know, if, if I'm Stoyer, I am really hoping that things just break my way. Like, and, and I know it's, like, not really a great draft strategy to hope to get lucky, but it kind of feels like he got a little unlucky in that first pack. Just, yeah. like, he, he committed a bit. To the black white, but like, where could he have gone? I, the I, only I, thing I, that I can blue see blue white. A little open. I can see yeah. blue white, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially when you do go blue white, there are some blue cards that you want in your deck that maybe other that blue drafters don't want. Cards like cards. Protocol Knight, 
So I think that's another direction that he could have considered going. Uh, and I do want to clarify things a little bit. There might be some pl uh, folks that are a little bit confused about why cards are being revealed, mm -hmm. right? And, and the thing is, when you open these packs, um, it's just too easy to, even, even if you're not trying to do it, to get a glimpse of the double face cards, the backside of the cards. So it's really hard to avert your eyes entirely and not see sometimes what your opponents may have opened. So in order to remove that from happening, everybody is just revealing all the double faced cards that they have and then sleeving it up. That's the good. only way to really make it fair. As we know, draft and magic in general seconds. is a game of information and, and you have to make that on an even playing field. Looks like Any Invasion black, of white cards here. Yeah, for Nathan, which is uh, not black I or white and also not very good. Yeah, well, fairly weak pack here for Nathan. Just really bad. the best card is maybe. Oh, there's a Vanquish the Weak. Oh, OK. OK, so can totally see that. I, he's got us. He's bringing a Stormcloud Rager all the way to the front, but I imagine he's just going to go with the removal spell. Yeah, here. Van Vanquish seems like the the pick Ten here. I, he does seem to uh, like going for the highest possible power level, though. Being able to cast your spells is nice, too. Wow. Is he really considering this Rager? Oh, he's going to take it. What? 14 cards to your right. Wow. Wow, he must really value this card. So I guess really he's just going to go three color here? I suppose so. Some, some Mardu. It's right. not a Phyrexian, is it? Oh, no. it's an ogre. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's a warrior. Yeah. It, All right. Wow, I'm surprised to see that. Oh. He. Okay, well, there's a deadly derision. That'll help him this cast a Stormclaw one. Rager. <laughs> but yeah, that's really surprising. Um, now, Stormclaw Rage, Rager is a very, very powerful creature. It's, it's kind of one of the cards that you absolutely want in your Rakdos Sacrifice decks. But it looks like Nathan values it highly enough to the point where he's considering swapping colors or playing three colors. Because right now, you just kind of want to be black-white, right? I just Ten can't seconds. imagine giving up on Elish Norn and the... Yeah. And the, uh, the Anthem. Like, uh, right. There's no way that the Rager is better yeah. than those. Like, right. It's a fine card. And the in Vanquish the, the Weak in a deck where you're kind of light on interaction already is just a fine card to take there. I'm surprised. I am. So he may have a read. There Correct. could be a table thing. There could be a personal preference at play there. Yeah. But that was definitely a curveball. I did yeah. not expect that. Okay, he's got an Unseal and an Izumi Informant pulled to the front now. Yeah. Both I also see a Phyrexian a Gargantua. Yeah. He's got the um, the, the alabaster, alabaster host sanctifier. Sanctifier. Yeah. It is a Phyrexian, right? Yes, it is. Which is Ten nice. Seconds. Helps you kind of rage. Uh, helps you kind of race. But, but the rat's just a better card generally. Yeah. I, th this is another like this is. Are you trying to do the Phyrexian thing? And I all right. Guess I guess right. he the is. Back but then one. you go back Fourth to the other pick. So he must just be looking for a skittering surveyor or something because he's yeah just going to plan on playing all three. I mean, colors. You, the derision gives you a red source. Yes, right. That's yeah. what I said when he yeah, picked it. Right. <laughs> it's like I can help you cast the thing. <laughs> Oh, man. Angelic Intervention, very solid combat sure. trick. Uh, I mean, if you're in red, a Ramosian Greatsword can do a little bit of work for you. Yeah, as a splash, though, it would be kind of odd. I imagine you just go with the Intervention here. Was that a Tiller as well? I didn't see. OK. But you know, this is just a fine combat trick. Draft. Having one in your deck will certainly change Definitely the way your opponent plays against golf. you, right? Mm -hmm. So, take a look at Javier. You have 25 seconds. Collect. Sitting across table. Okay. Yeah. Gift of completion. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely great. It's just a decent card overall. It's just but, a solid card. But really, really good. Yeah. Really, really, really. Just yeah. having that in play. But if you're black, white, I mean, that's Ten where seconds. it really shines. It's awesome in that deck. So things have actually gone pretty decently here for Nathan. A little bit of a sidestep with Stormclaw Rager. Unclear if that's a path he will Draft. fully walk down or not. And past right. 10 counts. But, but but the rest of the deck is Got shaping it? up reasonably reasonably well, right? Yeah. Yeah, a deadly derision goes a long way in this format. Yeah. It's generally considered the best removal spell there is. At, yeah, at absolutely. And now we're probably going to see a Dreg Recycler here. Just a nice card to have. It's a Phyrexian. Yeah. Solid two drop. You will, in basically any deck, you're happy enough just playing at least one copy of this. And yeah. of course, if you have drop. extra ways to Step create tokens or counts. sacrifice artifacts, it, it gets even better. Collect. 
Oh, is that another? Huh. I mean, he if took he, one last time. If, if he, he liked, liked it, it so much then, right? If he liked it, pack one. Pack if you're two, taking it over one. Vanquish in your black-white deck, there's a black-white card in the pack. There's a Furia in there. And he didn't even look yeah, at he's it. He's like, nope. So I think okay. that he really likes Stormcloud Rage. All right. It is a Step good card. Like you said, it, it does good work. But he has zero mana fixing right now. Yeah. Right? Well, just I, a derision. Well, there's a derision. I think he took a late urn, but I can't imagine him wanting yes. to play an urn. Hey, right? Windscarred uh, Crag. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's the beginning. It's if all you, coming together. You get a Windscarred Crag, maybe a Mountain and a Skittering Surveyor. That's three sources, right? That's Five usually okay to, to, to splash two red cards. Draft. I'm surprised to see him value that Stormclaw Rager that highly, though. Right. Again, it's a, it's a good card in Go the red-black deck, but it's, it's you, still not amazing. You also like, kind of want to oh, play it on curve, it. right? When you yes. play turn six, is it really that strong? And it needs help. Like, right. you want to put stuff around it that's taking advantage. Like, you, you don't really get ahead by just randomly right. sacrificing artifacts and creatures to it. Drop. But I will say. That was a Berserker. Or this Eagle is Fighter. Nathan Stoyer that we're talking about. Arguably the best player in the world. Yeah. Right? Given his yep. uh, results. So perhaps he just has enough experience playing with that card, and it's just been absolutely phenomenal every time he's played it. So we did see him with a light draft. splash uh, in yesterday's draft, too. So and we counts. will get to see him play, by the way. We're going to be watching him Collect. play this deck in the first round. We always like to follow our feature drafter into the future match area to watch to see how the deck played out, at least for the first round. Yeah. The draft. Pass four cards. Collect. Just an awkward spot, though, for Nathan. Kind of being forced to play draft. it all. He already committed Pass too many picks cards. to the Phyrexian black-white deck to really just abandon Collect. it. You, yeah, at the, you can't. You, if, if you're going to play these Stormclaw Ragers, you're just going to be playing three colors. Right. Draft. There's just not, he doesn't even have a ton of red cards. Correct. Right? You have the Ragers. Those are the only two cards that you're kind of happy playing. Right. So. Draft and pass the last card. He did end up wheeling a Ramosian Greatsword, which we mentioned. You There's also a Searing Barb. So Barb. A couple of fringe playables. playables. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, Searing Barb is kind of at its best when you are red black, right? It's it true. works well with the Rager. You kill a thing, you get a 1 1 incubate, you sack that, draw a card, right? Yep, totally. But these are just not reasons to be in red. The only one that would fit that description maybe is the Rager, and even then it's a little bit borderline. Yeah. That that urn is just dangerously, dangerously close to being in the playable stack, if that's how he's sorting his cards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mirrodin, Definitely not a great draft when you have to play mm. an urn. Or a Mirrodin Avenged. Not a True. big fan of that one either. No, that's... You do, that's a you do what you got to do with removal, but okay. that's really far down the line. All right. Put that one in the back. But Urn's still there. Urn is still there. I mean, um, I've tried making that card work, and every single time I draw it, I'm, I just feel sadness. So mm. I have since um, stopped putting it into my decks. You know... If you think about it, though, with, with a card like Urn, it's it's much better when you are looking to splash cheaper cards, right? Sure. The problem is when you're trying to splash a seven-mana bomb with the Urn, it's going to cost you eight lands to do so, right? Right. But when you're splashing something like the Stormclaw Rager, it's a, li it's a little more reasonable there. Okay. I might see it. It is also more food for the Rager, if you happen to be able to get on the battlefield otherwise. Right, get both in play and then sack 20 it. 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Combo. That Windscard Craig could be very important, though, if, if Nathan is prioritizing the, uh, the Rager, just because it does seem that he does. Yeah, I mean, are we looking at a... You can't splash black if you want to play the Derision, right? So Please put your cards face down. Are, there, are the white cards splashable? Pile. I'm just trying to figure out kind of where Nathan's looking to be. I think all of, most of his best cards are in black. The final and he's got some white, and then, of course, his best card is Elish Nord, and count which is in white. Got 15 cards in that booster. Okay, one more time around the table. We we'll go. go here. This is pack number three. And again, I mentioned it before, but playables-wise, Nathan's looking fine. He yeah. just wants to kind of... 
bump his power level up a bit here. You know, curve considerations might be a thing. All good. Stay yeah. on track. Have I mean, the Rager is a powerful card. Look at DFCs. It's an invasion of Tarkir. Yep, that's right. Another good one to reveal there for Javier. Yeah. Ooh, and look very, at that. Ayara good. is what Nathan is showing the rest of the table. Well, Widow of that's, the Realm. A, that's a nice one. I, I imagine we're going to be looking at an Ayara here from Nathan. Yeah, I mentioned wanting to boost a power level. That is a great way to do it. Great, great card. Super good. I mean, both sides, Ten really. Seconds. Yes. Right? In, the, in the beginning, just having it in play and making it so that your opponent's removal spells aren't as great. It could allow you to finish people off. And then, hey, you got some, some nice you large land cyclers in your graveyard. Mistake. You can put those into play and it's get some value. It's a great combo. Yeah. yeah. Cycle a land cycler, make sure you hit your land drops, transform, and start hitting. So that'll be an exciting, it's going to be very difficult to find something better than Ayara for yeah. Nathan. That card's awesome. Exactly. Gives you another sack outlet, and now we're looking at Nathan with, if, if he just chooses to splash red, which I think he's going to really try to, um, you know, then cards like Furnace Reigns become something that you're interested in. Of course, that's another red card that you're looking to splash, but certainly does not have a lack of uh, sack outlets in his deck. Yeah, I don't think he's had a chance at a Furnace Reigns just yet, though. Yeah. Uh, in pack one, he wouldn't have been interested. Right, but now well, you're done sleeping, he's in the market. Sure you have yeah. 15 cards. We'll see if there's ev anything even in consideration okay. or maybe something that he may be able to wheel. Welcome to the final booster. You have 40 seconds. Oh. Speak up. Thank you. Welcome to the final booster, folks. Thank you, Kevin. Ooh, but oh, Deadly Derision bummer. also in the pack. Going to have to ship that one. Invasion of or will is he? excellent as well. One of these cards gives you red mana, Marshall. Uh, good point. <laughs> I mean, Ayara is really powerful. Deadly Derision's the can't miss, right? right? It's just always going to be awesome. He, Nathan might take the Derision here. No I could way. see it. Ayara is great, though. The card's really good. Yeah. And seconds? he's somewhat set up for it, too. Right. Oh, oh he's going to take the Derision. Wait. Oh, there it is. I actually don't hate that Drop. pick. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that especially really if you're trying to splash come. red. Right. He actually Very needs the fixing. Yeah, that Very was good discipline from Stoyer. Hey, we Correct. do talk about how many powerful bombs are in this format. You need to make sure you have enough removal in your deck. And a final flourish next, too. Yeah. And, you know, the, now he will have two derisions and a final flourish, so his removal is actually respectable at this point. Yeah. Double derision, final flourish. And then he Invasion. Did, yeah. Okay. So now, 10 seconds. Deck looking like it's really coming together here. Good interaction, great synergies. Will he get Draft. there on his mana? Shuffle and path 13 cards. Uh, derision helps a lot. Yeah. Collect. Okay, probably not. Oh, he wait. Found a jury. That's not. That's not the one that I thought it was. Judith. No. I thought it was a Judith Marshall. No, that's not. <laughs> that one's pretty good it's too. It's good, but the problem is just that you really oh, need that, it earlier. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can get away I, with a stoke. I'm not sure about there? stoke the flames. That's that's a full on pivot to. Black, now you're red, red black. Yeah. Ten seconds. And then you're. I don't know what you're doing. I guess we're just all right. We're. Dr Jury's good, but this one's a little bit less flexible than and the ones he's got. You absolutely draft. want this one in Shuff play early, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And get everything else going. Like, you don't want to wait until you resolve a deadly derision. Yeah. I mean, the, what was the other option? The traumatic revelation? Yeah, something right? mediocre. Yeah. So I don't blame him for just taking the higher upside pick. All right. Ooh. There's that Marshal of Zalfir. Mar yeah, that's, that's... I'm going back to what you were talking about right. in pack one. Yeah, blue-white was... Probably another direction Nathan could have gone in this draft. Invasion of Alara is in there, too. That always catches my eye. Ten seconds. Not, not in this particular draft. There's Drag Recycler again. Filler commons, cards that will make the cut. Sure. Yeah. Check that box. Draft. Shuffle and pass. I think he just cards. 
really just relieved to have picked up that deadly derision. It, <laughs> yeah, that just really solved two Correct. major issues that he had. So I'd be happy about that. Oh, that is a late preening champion. That's wow. a preening champion. Fifth in the pick pack? preening champion. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Wow. And a knight errant of Eos. I mean, he's gonna take. Well. Oh wait, is he ditching white? I, I, that's what he's it looks like. He's taking a random hanger. He's been just it. tricking me the entire time. <laughs> Draft. So we we dog. valued the Elish Norn, the, the Anthem, plus seconds, all of the correct. basically all of Pack One that he dedicated to those right. picks a lot higher than he has. Okay, and it's a it's a it's a potentially a full on pivot to um, Rakdos sacrifice here. Um, curious to see if he has enough playables, right? That question does come in. He did dedicate multiple picks in pack I mean, one. we saw him take the Alabaster Host. Yep. Like third pick in pack two, right? Mm-hmm. Draft. Shuffle and pass. To me, this whole Open draft ha has been about Got the it. Stormclaw Rager. Yeah. Like, he clearly values it. He wants to be, he has, I believe that he pivoted mostly to that. Wow, that's way another back then. knight? Goodness. Was it really? It was another knight. So that Five was seconds. two knights and a preening champion. <laughs> Draft. Not relevant Draft to Nathan, but no, for but us it's spectators, one of the, it's, it's one like, of those oh. things. And we've all been there. We're like, right. ah, I could have gone this direction. And you see another one, you're like, darn. Pass it again, pass it again. And of course, now it's just way too late. He's already got a great sword, so I wonder if he's just going to go ahead and take a Gloomfang Mauler here. If he does want to potentially go Five three seconds. color still. Right, and you did take an unsealed of Necropolis. It's a nice little extra card to get back. All right. Draft. I mean, Shuffling now that we have a little count. perspective on what he's doing, he's really kind of showed us Go here ahead. in pack three. Yeah. I, he pivoted for Stormcloud Rager. Yeah, absolutely. Would not. I, I, I'm surprised to see that. Ooh, Invasion of Mercadia. That is a, that nice. is a fairly late Hiccup. Invasion of Mercadia, along with an Artistic Refusal. Yeah. Both very solid cards. Yeah, we so. both saw that one. Yeah. Draft. I Definitely haven't had that much. Now. I don't have that much experience playing Correct. with that sword. Um, with perhaps, Mosin great sword. Yeah, and especially because that's a second copy. Um, yeah. If your deck can generate a lot of small tokens, it's nice to have something in play. Yeah. That can that you can put on. Draft. So I have Shuffle played it. Five yeah. Cards. Thoughts. Um, it's medium. Okay. Correct. Wow. Mirror and Bane More splitter. Not, not as great, but. Uh, Swift water yeah. cliffs, no. no, no nothing interesting. Order of the mirror, though. I mean, those are like yeah. heavily played cards in this. <laughs> right. Just flying around the table. I guess these guys didn't get. Oh, oh my! Come on. Still so, in the so, okay, so just so just right. nobody is blue white, right? right? That's correct. And, like there's just nobody just on the table. Nobody wanted it. Yeah. Shuffle and path three cards. Ugh. Wow. Relic. I take that as an offense to my name. I am. I am a little sick. Tarkin is Dune nobody Shaper. blue red either? Draft. Nope. Pass two cards. Oh, okay. Interesting. What a fascinating Correct. draft from Nathan Stoyer here. I'm really curious to see what his final deck list looks like, and we will actually get that for you too. Take a card. Right. Um, That's the last one. Because Take a look at it. Okay. I can only so assume that now, he's gone black red at this like point, and it's just a you have to be. You have to be Rakdos. My, again, I'm just not sure he has sure enough playables in his deck. Right. Right. Of your cards. Given this swap, we might be looking at something like 20-ish playables. Mm-hmm. Right, we saw the angelic intervention. You look at all those white cards he just yeah. went through. Invasion of New Capenna. That's out. That's out. What? Whoa. Elish Nord's Elish gone. Nord's out. Yeah, perfection's gone. Perfection's gone. Yeah. yeah, these are tough. Okay, the barb's pretty decent in the deck now. He just may need to go, kind of deeper into the, you know. How but do you like, define a playable, Paul? <laughs> what, so, but my question, though, is, I mean, are these white cards even splashable? Are they even something you're happy splashing? No. Right? Yeah. Because Elshnorn isn't. Right. And then you really need to build around perfection in those type of cards. Right. You also need to have them on the battlefield. Maybe the perfection is just good enough if you're really struggling on playables. You get a 3-3. He does have a lot of drag recyclers. There are some drag recyclers. I think he's cutting it fairly close, but should be OK. okay yeah. He has one. We'll figure. We'll try to figure out it's if there's right. any cards that he ended up with right. in his deck that are below the normal playable cut. Yeah. Right. The one where you're going. That stands out. Right. 
Now, we're still struggling. We're, we're we trying to figure out what the last few cards will so be on Nathan, in Nathan's deck. But at so the end of the day, he's got good synergies, Yep. right? Some premium uncommons in the Rakdos Sacrifice strategy. Yeah. Couple of Deadly Derisions, right? So there's a lot of good cards in the deck. It's just, it was a very late pivot, an extremely late pivot, right? Very. And so, again, it's one of those things where if you kind of draw those that 21st, 22nd, 23rd cards, which I think oftentimes won't even make most decks, right? Yeah. Given how late he changed colors, that could be the deciding factor in terms of how, how Nathan performs. Yeah, track. I mean, the thing that's most curious for me is I would just like, I, and I'll try to find him if I can, just to ask Nathan, like, what's your what's your thoughts on the pivot, right? right. Because I, I don't have Rager as a card that I would abandon the strategy that he had for right. as a pivot, but he may. Yeah, right, he may no. just say, "Look, I think this card's great. I, I, it right. seemed open to me, and that felt better than going I, I with the Elishnorn." I think when you see a pick like that, you're treating that as a a card that uh, that's worth switching colors into because there was a Vanquish the Week in that pack. Yes. Now, I'm not saying Vanquish the Week is a premium removal spell. No. In fact, it's the it's the third best black removal spell at common. However, it's still solid. You kind of needed a removal spell. That's what I would have gravitated towards. But if you think Stormclaw Rager is that good, that much better. Then you go for it. And that, I mean, and that's maybe the only you don't value right? Elishnorn that yeah. highly, et cetera. Let's take yeah. a look at what Nathan actually put together. We've got his deck list for you here. And no white cards. But there is an urn. Oh, okay. So there's our line. Paul, I said I wanted us to find the line of maybe playables you don't normally see. Urn of Godfire is one of Is them. this just a one mana artifact to sacrifice? This is also a. There's no white cards in here. There's no white cards, 16 land deck. So you don't want to just play 17 lands? Oh, yeah, there's a land cycler there's in there. There's the Furnace Host Charger, and the curve is technically to five, but it's really to four because the Great Sword's almost okay. always cheaper. Okay. So this is like a pretty lean, mean yeah. Rakdos deck it's at the end a, of the it, day. It's got a decent curve, right? The Rouse um, reinforcements made the cut. That yeah, goes that's really good with well. the Ragers. Yeah. Uh huh. You see Searing Barb, which is another one that doesn't usually. The two Red Cap Heal Slashers are not very strong. No, not not especially the type of card that you want. It's a little bit better in kind of the red white backup strategy. There's stuff but, here though. But there, there, yeah. this, this is yeah. a deck. I can totally just see Nathan curving out. Yes. Right. With the Stormclaw Rages, which are extremely hard to deal with, and then using some removal spells to get some things out of the way and just kill his opponents before they can kind of take over the late game, potentially. Okay, well, there's the list for Nathan Stoyer. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we get to see that deck in action. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.